God's grace and peace and welcome to you all. It's a gift this morning that we gather together again for worship and we are blessed and gifted by all of us being connected at this time for a time for hope, for courage, for peace, for blessing, and for letting in all of the gifts of God that are here and now. Welcome to worship. The other day I was invited to go for a swim and I was told, make sure you bring a sweater. There's a bit of chill in the air. And so along with my blueberries and strawberries and my zucchini, I also brought a jacket. And it's been this week for the very first time here in Booth Bay Harbor that it has felt that there is a bit of fall in the air and the seasons are just beginning to change and there is all that more hunger to hold on to the gifts of here and of now and of summer. Our summer worship series is all about change and about transition and the ways that finds us particularly in our lives these days and the ways that all of us as a community, as a nation and a world are walking through a time of deep change. And our opportunity in all of it is to remember three things so far along the way. And that is that there are gifts in this time, but that they look different. That indeed there are and there is water to be found, but we need different tools in the midst of times like this. And the third is that it's not up to us alone, but up to us together. Today's worship service is all about together and all about discovering and rediscovering and consider the gifts of each other and the gifts of hands. And so as we center ourselves for this time of worship, I just invite you to look at your hands and I invite you to uh, feel your hands and be reminded of where today, where this morning, where right here and now have you used your hands to feel and experience tenderness. And where also perhaps have you used your hands for strength, to hold, to do something that required something, asked something of your hands? And although we all don't do this as easily these days, where have you used your hands and your fingers in flexibility? And where have you opened your hands and used your hands to hold fullness, the fullness of everything here and now? And it is in that fullness that I invite all of us just to open up our hands and receive the gift of this time, mindful that everything that is of God is already here and now. And let us open ourselves to receive the gifts of this present moment and this time together. Let us worship God.
Good morning. <clears throat> For the past month, we have heard a story of a journey to the promised land. Not long ago, I made a very unwelcome journey of three days to the hospital after a fall. The care and concern of so many wonderful people who called or wrote notes made one realize how fortunate we are to live in such a caring town. My prayer is that someday I can give you all a big hug of thanks. This prayer has been on my refrigerator for ages. A new year, one day soon. <clears throat> May God make your year a happy one, not by shielding you from all sorrows and pain, but by strengthening you to bear it as it comes not by making your path easy, but by making you sturdy to travel any path, not by taking hardships from you, but by taking fear from your heart, not by granting you unbroken sunshine, but by keeping your face bright, even in the shadows, not by making your life always pleasant, but by showing you when people and their causes need you most, and by making you anxious to be there to help. God's love, peace, hope, and joy to you for the year ahead. Amen. Scripture reading this morning continues our summer pilgrimage series um, and a story that we began several weeks ago now when the children of Israel, the people of Israel, were enslaved in Egypt. And during that time, um, vision was given, a, a hope was given that perhaps there was a way to journey to a different place, that enslavement was not a place to make home, but that there was another home, an unbelievable home, a home that seemed impossible, but a home of promise, a home, a land flowing with milk and honey. And it was Moses who first heard that call and that instilled in him that imagination that perhaps this present reality was not the only reality. 
And so they stepped out and he led them through the Red Sea and out into the wilderness where we found ourselves just three weeks ago. And there in the wilderness, only a day or two into their journey, immediately there is a hunger for what was and to go back. There's no food here. What do you expect us to do? And why did you bring us out here, Moses, to starve and to die in the wilderness? And the first piece that we have to learn in the wilderness, and I mean this, not just that wilderness of long ago in a story, but this wilderness we are walking through today in all of our unity and in all of our particularity, we have to realize that there is bread. There is bread here, and uh, the bread today looks like sliced bread, but the bread doesn't always look like this. The gifts don't always look as they did where we came from, but there are gifts here. It's just that they look different. By last week, they had gotten further into the wilderness and immediately another concern, there's nothing to drink and there's no water. And so they turned like we turn to our familiar tools to get what we want. They turned to grumbling and complaining and pointing and blaming. And if those <laughs> tools got them somewhere before, here in the wilderness, no matter how much they complained and bickered and pointed, they weren't going to get any water that way. And what they had to discover is that there is water. There's water here today and now for all of us. But here's the thing. We need to find different tools in which to find the water. Moses, showing the way again, had to open himself to listen. Not to the familiar ways, but to the possibility of a new way, which is to take his staff and do as he heard commanded and knock it against the stone and water in the desert. And this week, our story continues with a real challenge and a real opportunity, a real invitation for not just changing something out there, but changing something in here about who we are and how we walk through these days. What's in our hands that we have to open up for other hands to take and to hold. So listen then for this word of God from the book of Exodus chapter 18. Now Moses was carrying on doing what Moses did at such a time, but on this day it was a different day. And he was visited by Jethro, his father-in-law, and by his wife Zipporah, and by his sons Elizer and Gershom. And they came and Jethro asked Moses what he was doing on this day. Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood about Moses from morning until evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit all by yourself and all the people stand about you from morning until evening, day after day? And Moses said to his father-in-law, because. It's because the people come to me to inquire about the ways of God when they have a dispute, when they have an argument, they come to me and I decide between them, between this woman and this man and this man and his neighbor, and I make them known the statutes of God and God's decisions. 
And Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you, and you are not able to perform it alone. So listen. Listen now to my voice. Listen to me. I'll give you counsel, and I'll give you a better way. You, Moses, shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God, and you shall teach them the statutes and the decisions and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, choose among you able people, able people from all the people, from those who love God, people who are trustworthy and hate a bribe and place over such people a small portion of the people. That is groups of thousands or hundreds or fifties or tens and let these people judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you but any small matter they shall decide themselves. And so it will be easier for you and they will bear this burden with you. And if you do this, as God commands, then you will be able to endure. And the people will go to their beds in peace. For the word of God in scripture, and for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. And so it was an ordinary day. It was just an every day. And Moses was going around doing what Moses did. In his time, in his way, and in his place, it was leading people out into a time and a place of great unknown. And not knowing any other way to do things, he fell back onto the old ways of doing things. And Moses was very, very busy, doing lots of very busy and competent things that a leader might do, leading a people through a great wilderness and into a great unknowing. What for you, what for me, have you been so busy about? I mean, busy about this morning, um, busy about these past days, busy this past week about. Perhaps it's been this morning getting up and brushing your teeth, washing your face, perhaps getting a shave, getting your cup of coffee, finding your way to be here and now, all that it takes for you and I to get to this place here and now. And with this reminder, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal and it takes something and asks something of us to get out of bed and to get out and into this newness and into this place and into this time, it takes something and it asks something of us. And so Moses was going about doing what he needed to do each and every day, but this day was a different day. 
And I wonder for you and I wonder for me when in all of these days that sometimes perhaps have seemed so the same and so familiar, when has there been a change in your day as there was for this day for Moses when he had a visit? And the visitors who came were Jethro, his father-in-law, who had brought Moses' wife, Zipporah, and Moses and Zipporah's two sons, Eliza and Gershom. In the midst of everything that just goes on and just is familiar, a visit, and a visit in this case by family, who remind Moses who he is. You know, these have been really challenging months for all of us because it has been a time of not being able to see friends and family, not being with those people who remind us of our connections and who we are. And as Kathy shared, a lot of longing in all of us as in her to give all of our beloved friends and family a good and long hug. But that time is not this time. When Moses was visited by Jethro and Zipporah and Elijah and Gershom, he was reminded about who he is. And who reminds you about who you are? You know, it was a great gift in the last couple of days that I had the surprise of a gift of being able to be with some members of my family and to see my parents, my sister, one of my nephews and my niece, my nephew's girlfriend, and to be with all of them reminds me. It reminds me not only who I am, but of course reminds me who I used to be. It reminds me how I have changed and how I have grown. When I call my friends Larry or Leanne or Roy during the week, they remind me, they remind me about who I am. When I call folks on the phone, when I write them a letter, I'm reminded of the connections about who makes up who I am. Who reminds you who you are? In a time like this, I think it's really easy for us to think about all the people that are not here and all of the ways that we can feel sad or we can feel angry or we can feel disappointed because the people who used to remind us who we were and whose we were of that larger community that we are a part are not here anymore. But the invitation of this time is not to just mourn the loss as important as it is and the grief and the bitterness and the sadness of who is not reminding us, but to look out and see the surprise of who is here and who is now and how might we be reminded about who we are and whose we are. Well, Moses, in having this visit, was reminded perhaps that he was connected to a much larger group of people. And it's true, we all are. There's those people we can see right now and there's so many people that we cannot see. But we're still all connected to them and we're part of this system of being and doing and what we do in these times affects the larger system. And no clearer than wear your mask in public not just to protect yourself, but more so to protect others and the wider community. 
we're reminded, first of all, that we are connected to each other. The second piece of the story happens when Jethro watches. And I'm wondering, who do you let in to watch you, to see what you are doing, and who in your life tells you the truth? The truth can be a hard thing to hear. Jethro looks at what Moses is about doing, and it's a very familiar thing. Moses is making decisions, deciding cases, fixing things, solving things for this community that he's leading through the desert. Now, the piece is that he's doing it like they used to do before, they used to do perhaps in Egypt, when the people were divided into little communities or little tribes, little plots and spaces of land or homes, and there would be people who would oversee the goings on and deciding the disputes in those little communities. But when you're in the desert, the terrain is different. We didn't take all those little boundary markers and plots of land with us, but just this vast, vast emptiness and this vast openness. And Moses comes to this place with everything he knows, which is everything about how he used to do it. And he comes to it and he decides, well, we no longer have these little tribes and these little places. I guess I need to decide. I'm the one to do it, to decide all of these cases, large and small and particular and pointed for the people. And Jethro just watches. Who's watching? Who do you let in to even see? who you are. Do you even make a room in your place and in your day just to pause and reflect on why am I doing what I'm doing? And Jethro has for Moses one of my very favorite invitations and words in all of scripture, because it is a word of such truth, and it is a word of such care, and it is a word that indeed I think we all need to hear addressed to us this day. And what he says in, in all that you're running about and doing, what in it is not good? And Jethro says to Moses, what you are doing is not good. I mean, these people are lining up for you day and night, and you're, I see you, you're wearing yourself out, and you and the people will wear yourselves out. What you are doing is not only wearing out you, but it's wearing out the people you're trying to serve. What are you doing? The thing is too heavy for you, and you're not able to perform it alone. The thing is too heavy for you, and you're not able to perform it alone. You know, I think particularly as Americans, and for some of us um, more particularly and more pointed than others, but we really learned that it's all about doing it alone. Certainly, as a man, I learned that it was about doing it alone and it was all up to me and it was a sign of strength and competence to be doing it that way. And so many of my brothers and far too often myself have put my hands in my pocket or folded my arms, put my head down and done what needed to get done. And it's not that there's 
not a place and a time for that. For putting your head down and doing what needs to be doing and done. But you know, it is my sisters. It's the mothers and sisters and nieces and women in my life who so often have been the ones that have taught me to look up and look around to see who else is here. And perhaps they might have something to do with me finding my way through instead of just my dogged determination. And Jethro is that voice of compassion, that voice of care that says to Moses, look up and look around. And look at all of these people who are here. Call on them. Use them. Use their gifts. Divide up the communities of people in little groups. Start with thousands and then hundreds and then fifties and then tens, little groups of people. And look among the people and find leaders among the people and be surprised. Be willing to be surprised about who they are. But they're the people of integrity. They're the people of care. They're the people of good heart and they're the people who are willing and able to tell truth. There are people who know that it's not about them, but it's about us and about doing and deciding what's good for all of us. And give these people, expand to these people, empower, equip, support these people to do the work that you have been carrying all yourself. And I wonder in your life and I wonder in mine, what you are doing, where you are doing too much. And where is an invitation, an invitation not just someday, but perhaps today, and to say, hey, I could use some help, and be open to finding that help in maybe a very surprising place and way and person. When I came to Booth Bay Harbor six months ago, I came and I just started to do as I had always done things. It was certainly a time of wilderness. I'd moved 3,000 miles from home and doing a job as an interim pastor that I'd never done before. It was certainly a wilderness time in my life. It was a wilderness time in the life of the church. A beloved pastor, also their longest serving pastor of 16 years, had retired at the end of October the year before. It was a time of in-between. But sometimes wilderness times are really hard to recognize at the wilderness times. We just start doing things like we always did them and keep on and fold our arms and look down and do what we did. But the key about the wilderness is we have to look up and we have to discover each other. Amidst all of the challenge and all of the grief, all of the death and all of the dying that has been this pandemic. It's also been an opportunity for it has made me and it's made us as a community have to look up and discover each other. I mean, when I can't do my familiar thing of calling people up and going for a visit, there has to be a new way to be found. And so a community divides itself up into little communities to call and reach out and to connect with each other. When you no longer can look to one person to solve all of the issues. And in fact, the issues of the present day are issues like we've never walked through before. You have to look to the collective wisdom and a wider wisdom of a whole to figure out 
and to find a way through. And in this time, in the crisis of this time, both the challenge and the opportunity of this time, it's made me take my hands out of my pockets and open up my hands and lift up my eyes and to discover each other. Who do you need to discover today? And who is out there for us to discover and to offer our hand? One of the most heartbreaking times of a pandemic is the time that some of you have already walked through. It's like Kathy's walked through. It's that time of being in a hospital when you have to be alone, when you can't have the visitors who would be there to come. Some of you have walked through the death of family and friends and loved ones, and you haven't been able to be there. Thomas Dorsey wrote, Precious Lord, Take My Hands, after the death of his wife and the death of his infant son. It's a song all about needing, needing God to come in all of the ways we need God to come, as compassion, as care, as strength, as love, as encouragement. We can look at times like this and think and feel and know as we do about whose hands are not there that we wish were there, that we long to be there. We can grieve, and there is such a place and time, yes, for that now. And, and the story today reminds us to open up our hands and to look out and to see and to know and to meet the many hands that are not, that are not our hands, but our collective hands, all of the hands that are there. May we find this day an expanded notion of that community of care that we're called to be, and to celebrate and to see and to proclaim and know the truth that God's hand is indeed in all of the hands. Thanks be for the gift of one another. When we have one another, we can find our way through just about anything. Amen. Precious Lord, take my heart.
And so we come to this time for prayer. And let us begin again as we're always invited to begin with just giving thanks for everything, for everything that is here and in now, everything that is of beauty and of grace, of connection, that reminders of love. Let us give thanks for all of the hands that have been in and that are in our life of tenderness and compassion and care and strength. Let us give thanks for the communities of which we are a part and give thanks for those who remind us about who we are and whose we are. We give thanks for the gift of church, meeting as we are, though apart yet together. And may we take this time and even this day to write a note and to reach out and make a call for somebody who reminds us about who we are. For all of the gifts of today and here and now, for the gifts of summer, we give thanks and together we say, amen. And we come as a people in a time of deep change and transition. News here in Booth Bay this week um, about changes and schedules for our high school and elementary um, middle school children. Um, and prayers today, especially for our children. Our beautiful cloth here on the communion table comes from kids um, in our Sunday school. And our prayers go out to each and every one of you and the other children, not only here in our schools, but throughout our country and indeed throughout our world who are facing a time of challenge and change and decision making for all of their parents um, who walk with them through these times. And maybe we be a reminder for them of connection and care that they're not alone. This week we marked 169,000 people in our country who have died of COVID-19 and 771,000 people throughout the world. So many moms and dads and children and aunts and uncles and grandparents. We give thanks for all of the hands who have been there when we as family and friends have not been able to be. For the, friend, for the hands of nurses and caregivers and doctors, for custodians and delivery people, for all those who help through their hands to care for a wider community and a wider world. We give thanks for all those hands that are and have been supporting people who are out of work and out of hope. And God, we ask that you might use us to be those hands in our own particular places and ways and time to be hands that join you and be hands of justice and love. And we thank you for the life and the witness and the hands of Jesus who did so many things, reaching out and noticing and touching and caring and strengthening and praying and who teaches us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to this time of offering 
And we give, we give thanks for so many people who have offered their care and their skills and their experience and their willingness to learn and put themselves out there to share and to hope and help make craft, community and connection. Begin with just deep thanks to Lucy Schmidt and Kathy Bugby and Jeannie O'Connell and Tom Dewey for leading us in worship today for song and voice, for the encouragement uh, that they bring. We give thanks for each and every one of you um, for the ways that you are sharing and offering, reaching out, uh, connecting, praying um, with and for one another. Give thanks to all of our faithful givers um, and knowing that those gifts are helping our world and our church be hands of a wider justice and a deeper love for all people here and indeed throughout the world. And, and we come to this time and we pray God for our imaginations to be broken open and for me, we to see here and now, today, in ways anew that we might be and use our hands to care and love in the particular places and ways in our own lives. And so, what will we offer today? today to mark the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. And we do it to mark that historical marker because it is a marker in which many who are part of this community have walked through so many different ways. For those who have walked through in service for loved ones, um, for family and spouses and friends for the ways that that particular war affected and shaped our own lives. And for the way that that war and all that it has brought may call us out to a reminder of the deeper need for us to discover one another and to see in the face and to see in the many hands of the peoples of this world, God's hand and God's face and God's love. For this marker and for this time, open us, God, to all that you might have us be. Amen. And now we come to the close of this service with this blessing. May God grant you the grace never to sell yourself short but grace to risk something big for the sake of something good and grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. 
And may that very love of God burn brightly within you and go ever before you. And may you reach out and share that light and that love with all that you meet. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, blessings this day and forevermore. Amen.